the creation of a new information operations technical training school. The first command simply must arm our airmen to outthink, outperform, outpartner, outinnovate any potential adversary. Air Force Basic Military Training has an updated curriculum with a new focus on readiness and lethality. The first command, the Air Force starts here. Hello and welcome to the Air Force Starts Here podcast. I'm your host for this professional development podcast, Jennifer Gonzalez from the AETC Public Affairs team. In this episode, we're discussing an Air Force initiative known as Force Development. The Air Force charged AETC with executing Force Development on its behalf. AETC's Directorate of Operations and Communications houses a portion of the Force Development Mission and currently has five divisions dedicated to operationalizing the Force Development Mission. Those divisions include policy integration, planning analysis and resources, credentialing, competencies, and the Air Force Learning Services ecosystem operations. These divisions work to ensure the airmen we are developing today are prepared for the Air Force we need tomorrow, like the work being done by the Competencies Division. This division developed the Airmen's Foundational Competencies, which are a combination of knowledge, skills, and abilities that manifest in an observable and measurable patterns of behavior, which the Air Force has identified as key in preparing airmen. The Airmen's foundational competencies are categorized into four major groups, developing self, developing others, developing ideas, and developing organizations. Today, we are exploring the first foundational competency, which is developing self. Developing self includes the following foundational competencies, accountability, perseverance, communication, decision-making, information-seeking, flexibility, resiliency, initiative, and self-control. I got the chance to speak with Major General William Spangenthal, AETC's Deputy Commander, and Colonel Mark Coggins, Competency Division Chief, about the importance of developing self. Take a listen. Thank you, General Spangenthal and Colonel Coggins, for joining us. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. It's a delight to be here, Ms. Gonzalez. Before we get started, why do you think AETC was selected to become dual-hatted as the Force Development Command? Great question. By having a Force Development Commander, you have a person who speaks authoritatively for airmen all the time, and they can tie in all the work that's being done across the MAGCOMs and across the the headquarters staff um, to really uh, get the synergy and the synchronization that is necessary to develop the entire force. The uh, amount of interaction we have with key partners uh, doing strategy and policy up at the air staff in half A1 and General Kelly and his team, uh, Mr. Fedrigo and SAF MR, and just the synergy that has resulted because now they have a force development execution arm, right? Which is what MAGCOMs do. They go out and they execute the last tactical mile. They're developing strategy and policy and we're going and making it happen because it takes a big enterprise to do these kinds of things. So it is certainly a team effort. AETC has a big role in that effort and that's primarily in execution. So we work in partnership to advance force development for the entire Air Force. Now we know force development and these foundational competencies apply to all airmen across the Air Force, but why is it important that the Air Force as a whole has foundational competencies, including developing self? This one might take a a little bit to answer. And, And the way I would like to attack it is maybe go from big to small, kind of strategy to task, because I think by laying out you know, where we want to be as a Department of Defense and as a nation, uh, I think will then necessarily lead us to why we ended up at this developing self and the the competencies that are are part of that. So, you know, we've got a national security strategy, defense strategy, and military strategy that give us, you know, strategic guidance as as it should. Um, Recently, our chief, General Brown, gave us accelerate, change, or lose, along with some action orders. Action order A for airmen, B for bureaucracy, C for competition, D for design. As we dig into that airman piece, there are lots of lines of effort, and and us specifically in AETC, we have a pretty big role, but one of the the fine print items on that was that we need to understand the cross-functional attributes of airmen that will allow us to meet the national defense strategies. And, you know, if you look at some examples of 
you know, it's kind of our, some future fighting concepts. Uh, yeah, I would use agile combat employment and the ability to train multi-capable airmen within that you start getting into what what is it that is going to make them successful? I, you know, what I call them are great power competition airmen. You know, at some point you've got to determine what are those competencies that will allow us to be successful. Because today um, we already have the greatest airmen in the world, and our NCO core is really the is no kidding the envy of the world. But as we look forward to what's required in great in an era of great power competition. You know, there's a there's a level of agility and lethality. Um, our airmen have to understand what it means to be empowered, how to empower others. They're going to have to understand what mission type orders are and how to execute commander's intent. And you go, how do I do those things? And that's where I think we get to our foundational competencies. And specifically, when you look at developing self, you have things um, such as... Um, Accountability, decision making, uh, being information seeking, um, showing initiative, self control, being resilient, understanding how to communicate, um, you know, flexibility, perseverance. These are all things that are going to be required to be successful in great power competition. And so, um, to me, you know, kind of big to small, that's why we have foundational competencies. Now I know exactly what everybody has to a certain level. And as we work together, because it's not just one match com or another, it's not one co-com or another. Hey, this is an all in across the department in, in really a whole government approach. We believe these foundational competencies and specifically, you know, we're talking about developing self today. These are the things that all of our airmen need to be at varying levels, uh, they must have to be successful. So, Colonel Coggins, I get from an Air Force perspective why these foundational competencies are are important. But why, as an airman, would I electively select to get onto my vector and take these assessments and do these trainings? I love the direction you're, you, you went with that question. What's in it for me? It's uh, all about service before self. But the better we are as individual selves, the stronger we'll be in contributing to our warfighting teams. Because no matter what we might think, no airman is an island unto himself or herself. Every airman has the ability to maximize his or her potential within their workplace, but also within their life in general. So one of the things that that was criticized whenever we first came out with this list of competencies was it wasn't really Air Forcey enough. It didn't. It, these are the kind of attributes that you'd want if you were hiring into a corporation outside the Air Force. And we nodded our heads strongly and said, "Yes, airmen are exactly the kind of people that you want to hire in a corporation. These great airmen are are what make our service great." The agile-minded airmen, the aggressive learning airmen, the creative thinking innovative airmen who make a difference every day. Uh, there is great benefit in improving the human beings that we are and that are in our care. And that, that greatness manifests on the job. General Spangenthal, looking at your own career, what are some of the developing self-competencies you displayed or didn't? In my career, um, I mean, I've just grown an incredible amount. I mean, I look back at, you know, kind of where I started as a second lieutenant in Grand Forks, North Dakota. You know, I learned a lot of lessons, the, I would say the hard way. Um, communication, right? I, I was happy being a one-way communicator, <laughs> right? I wasn't a great listener. Um, and, um, you know, towards, let's say, decision-making, I, I used to tell people all the time, and I still do, the maybe one of the most important traits, if not the most important trait of a leader, is making good decisions. You could have all the other skill sets in the world, but if you make poor decisions, we're putting people at risk, um, you know, both from a personal standpoint or maybe a... Uh, an enterprise foundational standpoint. I mean, we, we've got to be methodical in some ways about making good decisions. We got to understand if people also have the, the right values and isn't part of making those decisions. You know, are they someone who, who does understand accountability on both themselves and their people? Or are they somebody who just, 
you know, does the men required, takes care of their task and moves on. Accountability is, is really important to me. Um, but there is a level of accountability just kind of day to day that I think we all can improve on, right? And I'll, also, I'll give you an example. It's not my, my, my shining moment in life. Um, as a young commander, I failed to properly document one of my subordinates' performance um, performances. And I knew there was a risk there. Um, you know, I failed at accountability. I did not document his performance correctly. And this individual then impacted, I would say negatively, lots of airmen. Was it fair to take care of an individual and then they negatively impacted, you know, 50, 75, 100 people? Absolutely not. I've taken that and I've learned a lot and I've had to make a lot of tough choices um, from, you know, through the rest of my squadron group and wing command. And um, I've never let that one go. You know, it's an accountability failure on my part. And I share it so that hopefully people won't make the same mistake. And it was what's strange is I made lots and lots of good accountability decisions, even when I was younger, right? You know, I, I, I think, you know, for the most part, you know, we, we, we get it right most of the time. But it's the it's those instances where we don't that sometimes are the most visible, right? And could be the most impactful. Now that the foundational competencies are live on my vector, what has been the response you've received from the Air Force, Colonel Coggins? Well, first I'll say I'm so excited that they're live in my vector, my vector. Hey, go there, folks, go there, go to the left side of the page, down at the bottom, it says Air Force competencies, click the link. Take the self-assessment. Be bold enough to take the 360 assessment. Follow the development of plan that's, that's a, uh, provided for you there. This is fantastic stuff. And I know it's fantastic not just because we built it. We built it to be fantastic. But we've had up, up to, or we're right at 20,000 airmen who have interacted with the foundational competencies in my vector. And hundreds, well, I guess at this point, we're now into the thousands have started development within their personalized developmental plan that they can get through my vector. Uh, that number continues to increase as word gets out. And truly, the, the my vector tool has been a real blessing to us. Being able to expose this great content to so many airmen so quickly within a program of record for the Air Force, that's been fantastic for us. And, and based on the numbers of people interacting with the, the information we placed there, it appears to have been a, a benefit to the airmen as well. Any final thoughts on the airmen's foundational competencies or developing self, General Spangenthal? So to me, this is, I mean, they're all important. Developing self, others, ideas, and the organization. But this is one where, um, you know, your individual drive can go a long ways, right? There's... Um, you know, you can you can dig into a bunch of these, but you're also going to need some help. Um, I, I think it's I think it's really pretty smart how um, Colonel Coggins and team kind of bundled these together. They make a lot of sense. If we don't become lifelong learners, if we don't continue to improve ourselves, um, I just think we're going to struggle, right? And I think it's that drive that we see in our airmen. Um, that helps make us the, the best in the world. It's an all-volunteer force. Our airmen want to be here. They all come here for a variety of reasons. And they really are outstanding at continuing to, to push and develop themselves. So to me, you know, any way that we can improve the ability for, for them to help themselves uh, and for us to help them in developing their individual um, skills and abilities, um, improve you know, the behaviors in these areas, um, you know, it's a feel-good story, right? Because I'm, I'm helping them improve, and at the same time, I'm helping the entire team improve. So um, I'm, I love it. I'm a big fan. Um, I'm excited to see where we go with, with all these in the future, and um, I really appreciate being able to talk about something that I really enjoy and love today. Thank you, General Spangenthal and Colonel Coggins, for your time today. For airmen who want information on the new competencies or to take a self-assessment, they can log into My Vector and select Air Force Competencies from the main menu. When airmen complete the self-assessment, they can immediately review their results and receive a personal improvement plan. 
If desired, the My Vector Competency tool can also allow airmen to receive feedback from their supervisor as well as a 360-degree feedback from subordinate, peers, or higher-ranking members. Thank you for the subscribe, stream, or download. And as a reminder, you can follow Air Education and Training Command and the AETC Command Team on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also catch up on the latest news across the command on our website at aetc.af.mil. From the entire AETC Public Affairs team, I'm Jennifer Gonzalez, and talk to you next time on The Air Force Starts Here.